My wife Iris sat on the couch next to me, holding a bowl of popcorn in her thin hands. On her side, our little boy, Freddy, sat. He looked just like his mother, the same dirty blonde hair in the fairway eyes, like eyes of a dreamer. The movie played across our flat screen TV, some CGI comedy that was talking penguins and llamas that could drive cars. It was some garbage from Disney. I would have never watched it in a million years, but Freddy liked it, so I suffered through it for him. We had turned off all the lights in our house for the movie. Only the TV's flickering colors illuminated the room, sending dancing shadows that flashed out behind us. Suddenly outside of the living room window, a bolt of lightning came down from the sky, splitting the tree in our front yard in two. Light flooded in through the window as if the flash of a nuclear missile were ripping its way across the town. A crash rang out as the tree split down the middle, its massive branches tumbling down onto the lawn. I jumped as the ground shook. More lightning flashed nearby, hitting other houses and lawns on the street. Damn, there wasn't supposed to be any storms, I said surprised. The TV had gone black, and now we sat in darkness. For a long moment, I thought the power had just gone out. Abruptly, it came back on with a roar of white noise and flickering of static. The volume seemed to be increasing by itself, grounding into a rushing symphony like a waterfall. I saw Irish try to scream something, but I could only see her lips move. As suddenly as it started, it stopped. The standard, please stand by, screen with the rainbow blocky colors behind it, appeared. There was a clanging, ringing sound that emanated from the speakers, high-pitched and whining like tinnitus. Then text started appearing across the screen. At the same time, a deep, serious voice spoke in the background, like a radio announcer reporting the death of the president. This is the Demon Emergency Alert broadcast system, the voice read grimly. This is not a test. Level 5 activity has been reported in your area. Do not go outside. Close all blinds, shutters, and windows. Lock all doors and close any attached garages. Do not open your door except to military or police personnel with the proper insignia. Even if someone appears to be in distress, do not open your door to investigate or try to interfere in any way. A temporary quarantine is in effect for your area. Military and police assistance is on the way to ensure the greatest chances of survival during this time of crisis. Please abide by the following rules. Rule number one, if blood begins pouring under your door, go to a higher floor immediately. Avoid physical contact with that blood at all costs. Number two, all legitimate military and police personnel will have a special insignia on their helmets and their jackets, an eye contained in a double-thumbed fist. Only accompany them if they have this insignia. Otherwise, they are imposters. Number three, avoid mirrors for the duration of the emergency. The voice cut out abruptly, slowing down into a mechanical whine. Static started flashing across the TV, covering the please stand by message that had returned to blocky letters. At that moment, the lights went out. They came back on a couple of seconds later, brightening and dimming before the power failed again. This time, the electricity did not come back on. What the fuck? Iris whispered next to me, taking out her phone and shining the light across the dark living room. That was pretty weird. Everything looks different outside too. I was just outside an hour ago, and the moon didn't look anything like that. She pointed. I got up, realizing she was right. The night sky outside looked strange. I looked out the front window, seeing the moon was casted in a fluorescent orange light. The cloudless sky had a dark red glow to it, as if some kind of eerie smog had covered everything. I had seen similar things happen in like massive forest fires in the past. What happened, Dad? Freddy asked in a small voice. Where did the movie go? I think we lost power, little man, I said, ruffling his hair 
in a nonchalant manner. I didn't really believe the emergency broadcast after all. I figured some teenager had hacked the TV station and decided to play a prank. Or perhaps some disgruntled employee had done it on his last day as a kind of fuck you to the station. I had heard of similar things happening before. It was somewhat strange how the power had gone out and the sky had changed, but I felt sure that it could have been all logically explained. Someone shrieked outside. I looked out onto the dark street, seeing the silhouette of someone running frantically down the middle of the street, zigzagging wildly. As the figure got closer, I realized it was a young woman. She looked like she was in her mid-twenties. She wore a white shirt and khakis. Her clothes were soaked in streams of blood that made the fabric cling to her trembling body. I saw a vicious gash bitten onto her left shoulder, a wound so deep that the white bone peeked out through the ragged patches of flesh. Help me! She screamed, her eyes wild and panicked. Why won't anybody help me? She staggered and fell forward, crying and bleeding all over the road. I was about to run outside and see what was wrong with this young woman when I saw another silhouette creeping up behind her. It looked like the body of a man, but something was wrong. As he drew closer, I caught a glimpse of this man's face through the dim light. The left side of it was rotted and decayed, while the right looked muscular and healthy. He wore a black suit that looked like a little more than tatters. Pieces of it fell off in a ragged strip. I could see his left hand was also decomposing. Whatever kind of sickness it was, it seemed to expand to the whole left side of his body. The stiff skeletal leg cracked as he dragged it behind him, slightly drawing near to the younger woman. The living side of his face split into insane rictus grin as he looked down at her. He carried a blood-stained axe that dragged on the pavement behind him with a harsh metallic groan. Get away from me! The woman screamed at the abomination, trying to kick at him, but she looked weakened from the blood loss, and her attempts were feeble and slow. The man laughed, a sound that rang out like a gurgling of blood. He spat squirming maggots from his mouth onto the dark street below. He knelt down before the gasping woman and gave a low whisper. It carried on the dead, silent air. So warm, he murmured, wiping his dead, petrifying fingers across the streams of blood that spurted from her left shoulder. He stuck an unhumanly long, pointed tongue out of his chattering lips and began licking the blood off his hand. But not enough. Not nearly enough. He stuck the bony, decaying finger of his left hand into the wound and started pulling at the ragged wound. Blood bubbled out in increasing quantities, covering her body in its wet sheen. The woman jerked, her face turned pale and bloodless. She tried to kick at him, but he only laughed, gurgling like the man with a slit throat. In horror, I watched him raise that axe above his head. It stood there for a long minute, trembling his hands shaking like a guillotine blade. Please don't, the woman pleaded as he just grinned down at her. In a blur, he swung the axe down into her forehead. There was a wet cracking of bone and a ringing of metal. She sat there with her mouth open for what felt like a very long moment. Then, limply, she collapsed to the pavement. A dull thud echoed down the street as her skull smacked the pavement. I felt sick and weak. Staggering, I put my hand out against the wall. A wave of nausea rose up from my stomach. I ran towards the bathroom, shining the light from my cell phone to light the way. Iris started crying. I heard her frantically trying to call 911 over and over again. Damn it, nothing's working, she cried. I stumbled into the bathroom and threw up all the popcorn and soda I had consumed that night into the toilet. Covered in sweat, 
I started wiping my face with toilet paper. I pushed myself up, glancing into the mirror. A cadaverous version of myself stood there, the dead face showing horror and surprise just like my own. I saw the same high cheekbones, the same shaved head, but in the mirror image, maggots writhed and squirmed in the rancid flesh. I backpedaled into the wall, stuttering, something incomprehensible. The reflective image did the same, his lipless mouth rotted and tattered as if they had been dug out of a grave. What the fuck? I swore, raising my hand experimentally. The mirror image did the same, matching every single movement perfectly. At that moment, Iris came running into the bathroom, her soft footsteps thudding gently against the marbled floor. I jumped, turning to her. There's something outside of the door, she whispered her face pale. I glanced back at the reflection, seeing that the other version was no longer following my movements. Watch out! I cried, but it was too late. The skull-like face came forward in the blur. His arm shot out towards Iris. The surface of the mirror swirled as if it were made of water when his pale flesh made contact with it. The sharp points of bone of his fingers wrapped around Iris's neck. Stunned and silent, I watched in horror as he started dragging her into this other world. Stop him! She screamed. God, make him stop! I ran forward, grabbing her legs as her head and chest was sucked through. There was a slight popping sound when her body entered the liquid-like surface. I tried to hold on with all of my strength, but whatever abomination was on the other side was strong, stronger than me. His iron grip yanked her right out of my hands. Dad? Freddy asked, slinking into the bathroom. His eyes were wide and wild. He looked around confused. Where's mom? Who's screaming? I had to make a decision instantly. I could either stay with my son or try to get my wife back. I knew I couldn't just leave Iris. I felt mentally torn. I looked between him and the mirror, my heart quivering with anxiety. Freddy, go wait in the living room, I said. Hide behind the couch. Don't answer the door or say anything to anyone, no matter what. I'll be right back. I wasn't sure if I would be or not. Before I turned to the mirror, I patted his head. Remember the rules that they read to us on the TV? He nodded. But he was only seven years old. How much did he really understand? Hell, how much did I even understand? I hadn't followed the rules, and now Iris was kidnapped. I turned back to the mirror, seeing that I had no reflection now. There was no sign of Iris or the rotted corpse with my face. Slowly, I walked forward, putting my trembling hand out towards the silvery surface. My fingers went through the mirror as if it was mere air, but I felt something freezing, cold, ripple through my skin. Pins and needles rushed up my arm. Taking a deep breath in, I pushed myself onto the counter and went all the way through. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you would like to see more of these, make sure to like, comment, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I've been talking to the author and if you guys would like, and you guys do really do like this, this specific story, make sure to comment down below that you would like to have a second part. Make sure to check the links in the description as well, like Twitter, Instagram, and everything like that. And if you wanna submit a story, make sure to check out the Gmail. But with that being said, Stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one.